Hi everyone. I'm offering this video to you as a way to refresh yourself from the practice that we just had for First Holy Communion, receiving First Holy Communion. This video will also help those who couldn't be at our practice to learn the things that they need to learn in order to receive First Holy Communion. So here we'll go forward. You'll notice that in some of these videos, in fact most of these videos, I have hair again. And uh, just so you know, my daughter's going through chemotherapy, so I cut all my hair off and shaved my head so that I'm like her in this whole mix of things. So please keep her in prayer as we move forward with all of this. Thanks and enjoy this video. God shows me how much he loves me. God shows me how much he loves me. God shows me how much he loves me. God really loves me. I'm in an area in the front end of the church, off to the side, that we call our work sacristy. The sacristy is a place where preparations for Mass are made. We have the ones in the back where the deacon and the priest and the servers vest, put on their vestments for Mass. And this is the one, we call it the work sacristy, where all the other items are arranged and set up for our individual Masses. I'll share each of these items with you so that you kind of know the nomenclature, the names of things as we uh, present them to you and as you go to receive your First Communion. So let's take a look. Let's start with this one. This is called a ciborium. It's a ciborium, it has a lid, and a ciborium is the vessel, the container that is used to put the hosts for consecration by Father and then for distribution by the various ministers that provide them, the priest, the deacon, or the extraordinary ministers that we use at some masses. So the ciborium. If there are two or more of them, they're called ciboria, but this is a ciborium. You'll see this on the altar when Father does the consecration. Another thing that you'll see is a chalice. Now this is a particularly ornate chalice. I'll put a picture on so that you can see it up close and see just how decorative it is. This is a very old chalice that we have probably a hundred or more years old. And we use this very regularly, some for the more celebratory masses because it is so beautiful. And you'll notice that there's a little cross right here at the bottom. And that little cross is always placed so that it faces Father when he's doing the consecration. The chalice is the vessel, the container, where we put the wine and then a drop of water and then during the consecration, it becomes the precious blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Just like in a ciborium, the hosts that we place there become the precious body of our Lord Jesus Christ, ready for us to receive. For a, a long period of time now, we don't know how long, we will not be receiving from the cup, from the chalice. This would be the chalice that we would use for distribution for the people in the congregation. Uh, the priest chalice is a little bit too delicate to be used too much for that. So we have these that are a little more sturdy that we use for that. Sometime in the future, hopefully, we'll get back to the ability to share precious blood with all the people who are coming to Mass. But for right now, it's not a safe thing because everyone's lips would touch this and even wiping it's not going to disinfect it to the point where it's safe. So on Father's chalice will be a couple of different things. The first thing is this cloth called a purificator. It's just a big square cloth folded very neatly and actually ironed so that it has creases and such in it. And this will go over the top of the chalice like this. And then, this is when the sacristans are actually preparing for Mass. This vessel called a paten, you'll see Father holding this with the host on it. And we'll have this right here. And then the host, 
Father uses this little bit bigger host, mainly because when he does consecration and he elevates it, when he raises it up, everyone can see what it is that he's raising. If we use those little tiny hosts, then it might not be as easy to see. And then it's covered with this. It's just a piece of hard stock covered with a cloth. This actually has the alpha and the omega on it, which is a symbol of Jesus, the beginning and the end, the alpha and the omega. And it goes on and kind of covers and protects. As Father says, the words of consecration, you'll watch, he will remove the pall from the chalice and then replace it. And it's just a way to keep the uh, precious blood covered when we are uh, doing the consecration. And when we set up for uh, the altar, set up for consecration, I'll go ahead and remove all this, set it all aside, and then prepare the chalice for Father. So our pieces and some of the things that you see Father using on the altar. The ciborium with its lid, the chalice, this is for precious body, this is for precious blood. We have the purificator. The paten. The host, right here. And then the pall. And that's how you'll see it arranged on the altar. If you keep your eyes open, you'll be able to picture all this stuff or see all this stuff during the course of the Mass. And for me, that makes the Mass much more interesting because we're, we're fully understanding what's going on with the Mass, the consecration, and then eventually when we receive Holy Eucharist. God shows me how much He loves me. God shows me how much He loves me. God shows me how much He loves me. God really loves me. So I hope you found that interesting. There are a lot of things that go on behind the scenes that most people don't get to see. So I thought I'd share some of that with you so you have a little bit more knowledge and maybe a better appreciation for everything that goes on. So let's talk about how to receive Jesus in Holy Communion. We'll first talk about receiving the precious body in the form of the host. When communion time comes, you'll be kneeling. You'll stand and go into the aisle to move forward at your first Holy Communion, it'll be to Father. At other communion times, it may be to me, Deacon Mel, or it may be to one of the other extraordinary ministers of Holy Communion that help us serve at Mass. You'll go forward and you make a throne with your hands, one hand on top of the other. You want the, the hand on top to be fairly flat so that we can carefully place the host there and not necessarily touch your hand so that we can keep from spreading germs that way. The minister will say, the body of Christ, and your response is, Amen. You'll then receive the host, put it into your mouth, and walk around to the pew where you've been sitting. So what you'll do is you'll go forward, and when the minister presents the cup to you and says, the blood of Christ, you'll say, Amen. And what I want you to do is reach up with one hand around the bowl of the chalice and one hand under the base. That way you have very good control of it, and that way when you take your sip, small sip of the precious blood and pass it back to the minister, the minister can take it easily from your hands without any kind of possibility of spilling it. For all of the First Communion Masses, Mr. Dummier will be available to take photographs 
he usually tries to take a photograph of the student as they receive their First Communion, and then we'll do a group photo and have the opportunity for individual photos. We'll have his envelopes available for you when you arrive so that you can select the type of package that you want to have and any other photos that you want to purchase and then turn that over to him and we'll have those photographs available shortly after the First Communion Mass. One other thing I wanted to share with you is when I was a kid, we used to play Mass. And we had a number of different ways we could have communion at our play Masses at home. One of them was to use like Neko wafers or something like that. But another one was to make hosts out of a piece of bread. And I've got a short video to show you how to do that so that you and mom and dad can practice doing Holy Communion at home. So you take a slice of white bread and the cap off of a soft drink bottle. I used the cap from my Mountain Dew bottle. You cut tiny circles of the bread out and set them aside. Notice I'm giving it a little twist and I'm able to pull it off the bread. They don't always come out perfect, but they'll work. Next, take the bottom of a glass and smash them flat. And once you've smashed them flat, you'll have something very similar to the host that we use in church. And you can practice receiving Holy Communion at home. Look at that. So there we are. I think I've given you everything you need to do your First Holy Communion. If there are any questions, please have mom or dad give me a call at the parish office, 419-334-2638. You could use my email, which is deaconmel at growinholiness.org, or I will give you my cell phone if it's something that can't be addressed during business hours, or you need to get me for some urgent reason. And my cell phone number is 419-680-6537. And I'm sure looking forward to sharing the Mass with you and your First Holy Communion with you. See you. Bye. So I'm